Emma Bates, do you realize that there's a meeting of the AIDS Society today? Oh, I must have fallen asleep. You better go along without me. Go along without you? Why, you haven't missed a meeting in the past 10 years. Aren't you feeling well? She's been acting pretty skitterish of late. You don't suppose it could be those pink pills we've been giving her? There's nothing the matter with me. I just didn't realize how late it was. Well, at least you can start getting ready and not sit there talking. I might have known it's that prizefighter person. His son is following in his footsteps and will come to the same end. Jim O'Banion was a gentleman even though he was a prize fighter. Emma Bates, do you mean to tell us that you're still mooning over that rowdy after all these years? And to think of what we went through to keep her from marrying that brute. Jim was always sweet and kind to me. Well, maybe it's just as well if she doesn't go to the aid society with us. <laughs> There's no telling what she might do to disgrace us. Come along, Bonita. You fight fans who remember Gentleman Jim O'Banion in his prime will feel as I do when we see his kid step into the ring tonight to meet Tiger Wilson. When we think what a stickler Gentleman Jim was for keeping in condition and then see his kid doing most of his training in night spots, well, your guess is as good as mine. There's no denying the kid could be a great fighter like his dad if someone would only pound some sense into him. As it is, we definitely pick him to last four rounds at the most tonight and that's giving him the benefit of our doubt. Now, a word of advice to men over 40 suffering from... Hello, is that you, Clem? Uh, what time is the 3.15 due? Half past? Uh, good. I'll be wanting a ticket to the city. No, just one. I'm going alone. I'm sorry, lady, but there isn't a ticket left for tonight's ballot. Oh, dear, I've come over a hundred miles just to see Gentleman Jim's boy fight tonight. Couldn't you do something about it? You might come back later. We may have a couple of cancellations. I'll save one for you if you want me to. Listen, honey, I'm all washed up for the day and ready to take off for City Hall. See you there about 4.30 and we grab the license. Knowing you, I'll suddenly forget there by closing time, which is 5 o'clock. Oh, now, don't talk that way, baby. Marriage is a serious thing. Yeah, I'll see you there about 4.30. I won't be late. Bye, sweets. Crenshaw's office right away, Terry. I just got a tip he's gonna blow the lid off the rackets tomorrow and put Gus Hammond on the spot when he appears before the grand jury. But boss, it's almost four o'clock. Well, what of it? Crenshaw will still be in his office. Probably take all night preparing the case so that he won't involve Flower Henderson as well. But I got a date to meet my girl at the city hall to get a marriage license. You told me I could get off a couple of hours early today, remember? And don't argue, unless you want to start your honeymoon out of a job. What are you doing? I'll call my girl, tell her I'll be late. Well, give me the number. I'll call it. It'll save time. Oh, okay. The number is Axminister 10007. Axminister 10007. Explain the whole thing to her, will you? Uh, tell her I'll get there as soon as I can. Sure, sure. I'll tell her. <coughs> what are on this? Yeah. Mr. Crenshaw, I'll see you in just a few minutes. Well, thank you. Yeah, I know, Mr. Crenshaw, but why don't you break down and give me just enough of what you're going to say to the grand jury to hang a story on? Look, Connors, 
My entire law business is wrapped up in criminal practice. What makes you think I'd sing to the grand jury and ruin myself? Flower Henderson's one of your most important clients, isn't he? What has that to do with it? Only this. Henderson wouldn't mind eliminating Hammond if he could do it in a nice legal way. Now, if you spill just enough to the grand jury to get Hammond out of the picture without involving Henderson, you guys will be sitting pretty, won't you? <laughs> you should be writing fiction instead of news stories. Ah, you're all wet, Connors. You said something about having an appointment before five. Yeah, yeah, I did. I hope it's not too far away. Well, it's far enough. So long, Crenshaw. I'll see you in jail sometime. I'll announce you to Mr. Crenshaw now. Never mind, sister. We'll do our own announcing. Hello, Terry. Hi, Marcy. What's the rush? Oh, I've got a date. Very important. Meeting McGow. See you later. Wait a minute, pal. What did Crenshaw spill? I've got an addition to make, too. Come on, give. I've covered for you many a time. Look, Bernsey, I gotta fly. Crenshaw wouldn't talk. I pumped her for 20 minutes, didn't get a thing. Is that on the level? Have I ever lied to you? <laughs> About three or four thousand times. I think I'll drop in on Crenshaw myself. He might like my personality better than yours. Could be. You're the personality kid. <laughs> Looks like you're just about one minute away from a stand-up, miss. It looks that way. Now, I don't suppose you ever work overtime. Who? Oh, not me. Us city employees have a union. Are you sure you had your young man completely convinced? Oh, oh, oh no offense. Only they're generally pretty prompt showing up here. Sometimes they backslide between here and the minister. Or was it mostly his idea to get married or yours? It was his. And if he does finally show up, will you tell him the idea was an awful bust? Sorry, you'll have to tell him yourself. This office is closing for the day. Well, well you certainly gummed things up when you gave me that assignment. So I gummed it up, huh? Yeah, Crenshaw wouldn't talk. I got to the license bureau too late. And if I know my girl, she's gonna pack me an ice the minute she lays eyes on me. So Rex Crenshaw wouldn't talk? Nah, shut up like a clam. Oh, he did, did he? Yeah. I took you out of second string sports and gave you a crack of general assignments because I thought you had a nose for news. What are you talking about? This. Yeah, while you were skipping over to City Hall with a heart full of love. How do you like that? I do, and that's the reason you're back in sports as of now. Hello, honey. Now, before you start throwing things, let me tell you what happened. I'm not interested in what happened. All I know is we were supposed to be married, and now we're not. Well, I'll explain the whole thing on the way to the fights. Come on, get your coat. Fights? Yeah, I have to cover him. You see, I had to run him with the boss. I'm up that Crenshaw story because I was trying to get to the city hall on time. Back riding sports again. At the old salary, I suppose. But yeah, but not for long. I'll show Evans he was wrong. You just wait. Sorry, I'm through waiting. I can think of better ways to spend my life. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to call Flower Henderson and see if that singing job is still open. You can't do that. He's a gangster. Not only that, he's a wolf. A wolf is a cinch to handle compared to a reporter. Well, I suppose if that's the way you want it, there isn't anything I can do. There isn't. I'd like to speak to Flower Henderson, please. Yes. Hello, Flower. This is Maris. Well, hello there. Yeah, surely. I guess you're out of luck, sister. It looks like a sellout tonight. You don't suppose if I spoke to Mickey? You know, he's Gentleman Jim's boy. He might have an extra ticket. Lady, if he don't snap out of it pretty quick, he'll be lucky if they let him in here again. Well, there's nothing wrong with Mickey. All he needs is someone to look after him. Well, maybe you could handle him. Why don't you talk to Gus Hammond about it? Gus Hammond? His manager. 
Maybe he'll sell you a piece of his fighter. You never can tell. Hiya, Terry. Say, I kind of thought you'd be back covering the fights again. You know, you're positively psychic, Mike. Why don't you get yourself a crystal ball and change your name to Madame Knows All? <laughs> Uh, say, uh, if you're a stag tonight, this lady will buy one of your ducats. What's the gag? It's on the up and up. She's come a hundred miles to see the fights, and we ain't got a ticket left. I'd be willing to pay for it if you have an extra ticket. Forget it. You've come a long way to see the fights, you're going to see them. Come on. Well, it's against my principle to go off with strange men, but uh, you look like an honest person. You are one, aren't you? I hope you don't consider me rash for doing this. Those things happen to the best of us. Uh, you don't think I'm a gate crasher? Some of my best friends are gate crashers. Oh. I guess we'd better introduce ourselves. I'm Terry Connors of the Globe Tribune. Oh, really? You're awful sober to be a reporter, aren't you? Mm, you go to the movies, too, huh? Oh, indeed. We have a theater back home in Fairport. It's called the Bite of Weed. Well, my name is Emma Bates, but back home they call me Aunt Emma. Well, that's good enough for me. I'm glad to know you, Aunt Emma. Oh, excuse me a minute, will you? Well, if it isn't Gus Hammond. Hi. I didn't expect to see you here tonight. Why not? Ah, come on, Gus. Give me the load down. You know this whole thing's a frame-up. Listen, you, I had enough trouble with the cops today without you snoopers insinuating I had anything to do with the Crenshaw deal. Crenshaw? Who said anything about Crenshaw? Well, what did you mean? I'm talking about the scrap tonight. I understand you got a fix for Mickey to win by a knockout. I was just wondering which round, that's all. Mickey O'Banion's a level kid. He only fights one way to win clean. Get that straight? Sure. Anything you say. Glad to hear it. Who's the guy you were just talking to? He's a reporter. Why? He was in Crenshaw's office this afternoon, just before we pulled that job. Yeah? Mm. Did he get a good look at you? No. He never gave us a tumble. Just tore out of the office like it was hurrying somewhere. He's the old battle axe he's cabin with. So you knew gentleman Jim O'Banion? Well, he proposed to me once. But you didn't marry him. Uh, no, my family sent me abroad to prevent it, and when I got back, he was married to a burlesque queen. I never saw him again. He died four years ago. Yeah, I know it. You made a special trip here just to see his son fight tonight? And Emma, you're okay. You got romance in your soul. Oh, thank you, Terry. Don't thank me. You're a tonic. You restore my faith in women. You see, romance kind of gave me a kick in the pants today. You poor boy. Maybe if I could talk to your girl, I could straighten things out. No, I doubt it. Come on, let's go on in. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, thank you. Something about that old lady looks familiar. Maybe it's her umbrella. You're right. Do you know who that is? Who? That's Ma Parker. You mean the old lady of the Parker boys? Yeah. And she carries her out around in that umbrella. And can she use it? Yeah. Remember when she went in that jail in Missouri, stuck up the sheriff and got her boys out? Sure, I remember. I think you guys are crazy. What would Ma Parker be doing here? You imported us to handle a job, didn't you? Okay. Maybe Flower Henderson imported her. It all adds up. Her being with that reporter that was in Crenshaw's office this afternoon. I don't like the setup. Listen, are you guys scared of an old dame? Why, if she ever sticks her nose in my business, I'll pull her apart like a rag doll. Not if she gets that persuader out of her umbrella first. They say she shoots silver dollars right out of the air. Maybe that reporter was putting a finger on you when he was talking to you. I seen Ma Parker sizing you up. Yeah? Well, I still think you guys are crazy. But you better keep your eye on the old dame just in case. I get you. It's gonna cost him an extra grand if he wants Ma Parker bumped off. You know, she's a sweet-looking old lady. Reminds me of my mother. So it was Duke and Joe who snatched Crenshaw. Yeah, and they made a neat job of it, too. Well, I'm leaving it to you and Steve to make a neat job of them. I want Gus Hammond to know I don't like the idea of him grabbing my mouthpiece, understand? Yeah, sure. And I've got a little job for you, too, Zelda. Make a date with that fighter of Gus's and bring him to the club tonight. Ah, oh, gee, Flower, do I have to go out with that palooka again? Look, baby, it's for me. You want to help, don't you? Sure, honey. Did I ever turn you down? That's better. The only way we'll ever get to Crenshaw is for Hammond to lead us to him. I suppose you're gonna write him a letter and ask him when he please take us there, huh? No, I'm gonna make Gus think his fighter is crossing him up. When he takes Mickey out of here tonight, we'll tail him. He may take him to the place where he's hiding Crenshaw. Yeah, that's all right, but uh, I gotta make Gus think that Mickey's giving him the double cross. The kid's in some kind of a jam, isn't he? Yeah, rubber checks. Gus is holding. 
How much? 500 would square it. And it's a cinch. Come in. Hello, Flower. Hello, Mara. Say, you're just what the doctor ordered. Oh, you're going to the doctor's now? Quiet. You look like you're all ready to go to work. Why, yes, if you like my audition. Oh, I wouldn't worry about the audition. Flower has dotted lines in his eyes, and that means a contract. You'd better be getting over to the stadium. You might miss Mickey. Okay. I can take a hint. Might as well come along, boys. Flower will only be asking to leave in a minute anyhow. slowly with both boys appearing tired. The crowd booed their waltzing. Keep your guard up, Mickey. That boy wouldn't be tired if he was in shape. What he needs is fresh country air and road work. You can't get fresh country air and road work in nightclubs. Loudly, and the referee urged him to action. Get in there and fight, Mickey. Your father would never fight like that. Look out for that right. Start under the floor. A fight, Mickey. Fight. Sound like you got a fan out there. Yeah. I wonder where she came from. Come on, quit your talking and break it up. Both of them landed light lefts at the bell, round even. Where are you going? I'm going to tell my boy a thing or two. Mickey O'Banion, you're a disgrace to your dead father. Why don't you get in there and fight? OK, Andy. I'll take him this round. Now you're talking. Give him that old one, too. Yeah, yeah, sure. He'll take him this round. That'll be a relief. Round six. out of their corners and both landed hard rights. O'Banion sent Wilson staggering to the ropes with a jolting left hook, then followed by a right cross. Now you're fighting, Mickey. Give it to him good. I guess the way his father used to fight. Take it. Make it look good. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, good boy, seven, Mickey. seven, you did it. Eight, nine, oh, ten. Knockout came after two minutes and thirteen seconds of the sixth round. I'll phone them a lead in a half hour, Charlie. Ladies and gentlemen, the eight round semifinal will follow well, immediately. That. I'm glad your boy won. What's the matter? Oh, I'm just a silly old maid. I was just thinking. If things had been different, he might have been my boy. Well, bless your heart. But I wouldn't worry about that. He probably wouldn't have been a fighter if you'd been his mother. And why not? His father was a fighter. <laughs> Aunt Emma, you're all right. Terry. What? I wonder if you could take me back to his dressing room. To his dressing room? Well, sure, I guess so. Come on. Oh. You better wait till I see if he's decent. Hi, Mickey. Hiya, Terry. Hey, what you think of me tonight? Not bad, huh? Terrific after you stopped waltzing. Oh, I had to feel him out for a few rounds. Sure, I know. I've got an admirer of yours outside. Yeah? Yeah, a lady from your hometown wants to meet you. A lady, huh? Oh, sure, bring her in. Hey, Jake, give me my robe. Never mind about the robe. She's been around fighters before. She knew your father. Oh, an old dame, huh? Come on in, Aunt Emma. Mickey, this is Miss Emma Bates. She's the fan you heard yelling tonight. Oh, so you're the one. I'm glad to know you, Aunt Emma. How do you do, Mickey? 
Don't mind if I finish giving the kid his rub down, do you? Oh, no, go right ahead. So you knew the old man. He was quite a guy, huh? I'll say he was. And every time you crossed your right hand tonight, I could see him all over again. No kidding. Hey, did you know the old lady, too? No, we never met. Oh. Say, hey, Mickey. Uh, what about Gus Hammond? I didn't see him in your corner tonight. Gus, uh, oh, Gus, uh, he uh, couldn't make it tonight. Gus Hammond? Yeah, he's my manager. He's a big shot. Yes, he must be. When he wasn't <laughs> even in your corner. You know how your father won the championship? With his fists and his manager's brains, that's how. Yeah? If I had charge of you, I know what I would do. I would see that you had plenty of wholesome living. No dates, no nightlife, and lots of good food, like milk and eggs and nice country ham. That sounds swell. Gee, give him all that, Aunt Emma. He'd be champ. Ouch! Jake, will you watch my neck? It's got a crick in it. Sorry, champ. Oh, here, hold these, and I'll take that kink right out. Hey, <laughs> hey what's the idea? Now, relax. That's that. Say, that's not bad. That's all right. Jake, you ought to take lessons from her. Yeah, guess there ain't nothing sacred no more. Well, don't you know how to knock? Since when did you get so fussy? What's this, a lady trainer? Um, Miss LaFontaine, meet Aunt Anna Bates. Oh, a relative, huh? Oh, no, I'm just a friend. She knew my old man. Well, far be it for me to barge in on old home night. See you around. Hold everything, baby. Oh, now, just let me take that kink out, Mickey. It's all gone, Aunt Emma, no kidding. Stick around, Zelda, we're stepping out. You don't mind excusing us, do you folks? Oh, it's okay, we understand. Come on, Aunt Emma. I think the kiddies want to be by themselves. Awful glad I met you, Aunt Emma. And I'm glad to have met you, Mickey. And remember what I told you. Your father was a great fighter, and you can be too, if you just take care of yourself. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that, Eddie. Any guy who keeps company with me has to take care of himself. Uh, what she means is... I it's... know what she means. Come, Terry. So long, Mickey. Watch yourself on the clinches. Well, guess I'll mooch along. Uh, say, Jake, you haven't got a ten spot you can spare. Sorry, champ. Uh, Gus still holding out on you, eh, kid? Yeah. I know where you can pick up 500 easy. 500? Wow, with that kind of dough, I could go for that milk and eggs routine. What are you talking about? Will you excuse me, Adam? I gotta make a telephone call. Go right ahead, and I'll wait. All right, Ma. No funny business now. Come on. What does this mean? Don't get excited, Ma. We just want to ask you a couple of questions. I'll take the persuader. Take the gat out of the bumper shoe, Joe. Okay. You'll pay for this, you flibberty gibbet. Gee, that's a swell word. What that mean out west? Smart me up, will you, Ma? I want to pull it on the mob. Oh, mob you. Stop that. Don't you know it's unlucky to open up an umbrella indoors? And believe me, it'll be unlucky for you. Both of you. Oh, now take it easy, Ma. I was just looking for your gun. Hey, there ain't no rod in this parasol. Oh, so you ain't healed, eh, Ma? Healed? What are you talking about? And don't call me Ma. I'm not a mother. Oh, no? I suppose you found out two Parker boys under a bush. Parker? Yeah, Parker. You're Ma Parker. If you think we don't know it, you're Batty. You mean that famous woman outlaw? I've read about her in the paper. <laughs> I bet you have. You sure got some swell notices on them jobs you pulled, Ma. <laughs> What's so funny, Ma? <laughs> and the fact that you recognize me as Ma Parker. <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't think it was so funny if we started pushing you around. We're very serious citizens. Listen, mister, where I come from, if anybody pushes us around, we push right back. Wow, tough, huh? Just as tough as you are. And give me that umbrella. I'm getting out of here. Oh, now hold everything, Ma. We don't want no trouble with you. You'll get plenty of it if you try to keep me here. Look, all we want to know is whether you're in town to pull a job for Flower Henderson. Flower Henderson? Who's he? Okay, clam up if you want to. I just got this to say. We're playing along with Gus Hammond. So if you want to stay healthy, keep your nose clean. Young man, my nose is always clean. Okay, okay. Keep it that way. You don't want to wind up in a slab of concrete on the bottom of the East River. And we don't want to hurt no female. On account of we're gentlemen. Yeah, and on account of you remind me of my mother. 
If you were my son, I'd turn you over my knee and play all the daylights out of you. Now I'm leaving and I dare you to stop me. Gabby, old dame, ain't she? Yeah. Just like me mother. Hello, boss. Thought I'd tell you I saw Gus Hammond at the feist tonight. Now, what do you want me to do? Run it on the society page? Now, wait a minute. He knows something about that Crenshaw case. I'm going to follow it up on my own time and bring you the story. You do, and I'll eat it. Okay, so you'll eat it, including the carbon copies. Of all the hard-boiled, ungrateful Simon Legrees, that city editor of mine, I offered to dig up a swell kidnapping story, and is he grateful? No. Has somebody been kidnapped? Yeah, Henderson's mouthpiece. I mean, his lawyer. Shucks, I know what mouthpiece means. I read the Broadway columns when my sisters aren't looking. <laughs> yeah, you're right on the beam, aren't you? Well, I guess you can take care of yourself now, huh? Well, where are you going? Over to Henderson's nightclub. I got a hunch things are gonna break wide open over there any day now. Well, is there any law against me going with you? Oh, well, no, but it's a hot spot. I don't want to mix you up in any trouble. Well, do you think I want to go back home and tell them I haven't visited a hot spot? <laughs> Well, let's go. I guess there's no harm in taking you along. Hot diggity. <laughs> Scoop twice in one day. What? Has Connors come in yet? No. Well, when he does come in, don't say a word to him. Just send him in to me. I have a few choice phrases I want to deliver just before I fire him. by the paper you scored, all right. Oh, that was a cinch. Yeah, no trouble at all. What's this stuff about the cops looking for an old lady with a rain stick? Huh? What are you talking about? Hey, give me that paper. Ma, well, how do you like that? We do a job and the cops give some old dame credit for it. You sure this old lady didn't see you? Oh, not a chance. Nobody saw us, did this Steve? Not a soul. I guess it's all right for him to be looking for someone else. The boys can stay in town for a while. Land's sakes, Benita, we might as well go to bed. We'll catch our death of cold waking up for that, that moonstruck sister of ours. I just want to be here when she gets back, that's all. We've been entirely too lenient with her. Well, I kind of dread to think of her all alone in the city. Gracious knows what mischief she'll get into. Well, notifying the police will only cause a lot of scandal. Besides, Clem says she bought a round-trip ticket, so she must be planning to return. Well, I hope to goodness if she does stay overnight in town, she'll have sense enough to stop at some nice, respectable boarding house mm. and not try to make a fool of herself. Hey, Art, keep a change. You gave him a whole dollar. Yeah. Well, the bill was only 75 cents. Young man, somebody ought to teach you not to squander your money. <laughs> Forget it, sweetheart. When I turn in this story we're going to get, I'll have my old job back and probably a bonus. Come on. Good evening, Mr. Connors. Hello, Gracie. How are you tonight? Fine, right, thank you. Young lady, aren't you afraid of catching cold in that outfit? Is she kidding? <clears throat> well, if it isn't battling McCloskey, how are all the gory little fights tonight? Well, they were nothing compared to the battles we've had, but I did have charming company. May I present Miss Emma Bates? This is Marison, Emma. How do you do? I've heard a lot about you. Really? Well, yes, he told me that You when... can tell me later. It's almost time for me to sing. Oh, do you sing? So they say. I'm sorry, but I have to go now, really. 
my, but she's sweet. Yeah, so's a persimmon. Well, how about a snifter? A snifter? Yeah, let's sit at the bar and duck the cover charge. Plain water, please. What do you have, Aunt Emma? Well, I've been known to take a sip of port before going to bed, but I'm not going to bed yet. Oh, what's a zombie? A zombie is not for you. I bring her a horse's neck. What's a horse's neck? Uh, never mind. She's smiling at us, Flower Henderson. Can't you see she's just trying to make you jealous? Jealous, my eye. The thing she's trying to make is a contract. Though that may be, still I can see. I can't get you out of my mind. When you said goodbye, I didn't cry. I didn't care. She has the lovely voice. I guess you'd call her a talk singer, wouldn't you? That's not what I'll call her if she goes on working here. Dear, you're meant for me. I'm meant for you. That is what fate has designed. No use to try to alibi. I can't get you out of my mind. You see that? She went right back to his table. Give me another drink. Now, don't try to drown your sorrows in spirits, Terry. What about that story we were going to get? We'll get it. Oh, now you're talking. If you take my advice, you won't even look at her again tonight. Just act like she wasn't here. <laughs> that always gets them. How do you know? Oh, silly, I've read advice to the lovelorn for 30 years. My, this certainly makes me feel foolish. What's in it? Grenadine, lime juice, ginger ale, charged water. Oh, well, mm -hmm. it certainly is exhilarating. Me, oh my. <laughs> There's Mickey. I think I'll powder my nose. Okay, hurry back. The idea of gallivanting around like that when he ought to be in bed. Move right in, he's waiting for you. Okay. Something's troubling that boy. Nah, he got that way from running into too many left jabs. Hello, Mickey. Hello. I'm a friend of Flower Henderson's. I do a little business for him now and then. Zelda said that you might be interested. What's the deal? There's one for the books. Flower Henderson's trigger man getting chummy with Mickey. Is that bad? Dang good, any way you look at it. Got everything straight? Sure, and I do a swan dive in the third round. Hey, why can't I take a flop in the first? Because we want it in the third. Here's your check. Hey, wait a minute, I can't take a check. I gotta have cash. Sure, sure, I know. Flower thought of that. You just endorse it, I'll cash it. Why have I got to endorse it? We got to have a receipt, don't we? Yeah, I guess. Hello, Gus. This is Zelda. What's the matter? Is Flower giving you the brush off? Look, I got to make it snappy. I'm over at the Savoy with Mickey. I just overheard something. The kid's going to give you the double cross. Yeah, on the level. 
You better get over here right away. Well, everything under control? Sure. Swell, let's have a little drink to celebrate. No, thanks. I gotta be running along. See you later. So long, Mickey. Hold the fort, Aunt Emma. Well, where are you going? You can't leave me here at the bar alone. You'll be safe. I won't be long. Got some work to do. Another horse's neck for the lady? And heavy on the grenadine. <laughs> We gotta shove off. What for? I'm just beginning to enjoy myself. I know, but I gotta get going. Oh, now that you're flush again, I suppose you've got another date, huh? This is business. Oh, well, we can have another drink anyway, can't we? I suppose. You know Gus Hammond? Who doesn't? See that he gets us, will you? And I don't want him to know where it came from. You understand? I get it. Hello, sweetheart. Back again. Oh, leaving so soon, Mr. Connors. Hey, never mind the hat. What you got there? Anything interesting? None of your business. Oh, come on now. Well, I didn't know Blackie Hale was on writing terms with Gus Hammond. Hey, give me that. What do you think you're doing? Hello, Terry. Well, if it isn't Detective Lieutenant Miller. Hey, you know Gracie. Nice girl, smart, too. I'll see you again, sweetheart. Check your hat, Lieutenant. No, I don't think so. I just want to look around. Hold your breath, Aunt Emma. I think I'm on to something. Well, how do you like that? Well, what is it? Well, for some reason or other, Flower Henderson's trying to frame Mickey O'Banion. Framing Mickey? Yeah, look, Aunt Emma, you hang on to this like grim death. If anything happens to me, give it to the police. Or better yet, give it evidence. Well, He's the city editor of my paper. Well, what in the world? I know it's all very confusing, but I'm on the trail of something plenty hot. Now, you stay here, I'll get back as quick as I can. Framing Mickey, huh? Well, now. Good evening, Mickey. Good evening, Miss LaFonte. Hello, Aunt Emma. Why, isn't this a small world? When I said goodbye to you in the dressing room, I didn't expect to see you again, and here we are together. Do you mind if I sit down? Sure. Have a seat. Oh, thank you. You know, I'm getting the biggest thrill out of this. The first time I've ever been in a nightclub. No fooling. Mm -hmm. You know, back in Fairport, we go to bed always at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock? Yeah. That ain't living, Aunt Emma. Uh, don't you think so? <laughs> Hammond. Having a little party? Oh, hello, Gus. Sit down. You don't have to stand up for me. Gus, get that check? No. Find out why he didn't. you ever since he told me about you in the dressing room tonight. That's swell, but you I've got a great idea. Why don't you let me take Mickey up to the country where he'd get plenty of fresh air, exercise, and good food, and he'd be a champion, just like his father. I'd like that. Sure, sure, I know. Look, uh, do you girls mind finding something else to do? I want to talk to Mickey alone. Let's powder our noses at him. Oh, but I don't want to powder my nose. I want to ask Mr. Hammond some more questions. <laughs> Suit yourself. You 
can have it now, buddy. <laughs> I ran out of nickels. Normandy 9, 4,000. City desk. Hello, boss. This is Terry. I'm over at the Club Savoy, and I'm on the trail of a story that's going to pin your ears back. So you're at the Club Savoy, and you're on the trail of a big story. Listen, you blundering idiot. Where were you when those two thugs were murdered at the stadium tonight? Two thugs murdered at the stadium? Every other paper in town had it, not a line from you. You wouldn't know a new story if you woke up and found one in bed with you. You're fired, Mr. Connors. And don't bother to come in the office for your check. I'll mail it to you. My blood pressure couldn't stand the sight of you. Boss, are you there? We'd like to see you in the office, mister. We want to have a little talk with you. Okay. Suppose, Mr. Hammond, I wanted to buy Mickey's contract. How much would you ask for it? It ain't for sale. Oh, but you must know what you take for it. Listen, I said it ain't for sale. I also said I wanted to talk to the kid privately. And that's just what I'm going to do. On your feet. Let's find a place where there ain't so much noise. See you later, animal. This way. Oh, dear. Ready to talk? If you listen very carefully, you won't hear a thing. If you're smart, you'll tell us where that envelope is. What envelope? Have you any idea where Terry is? Why ask me? He's liable to be anywhere. Young lady, you're taking entirely the wrong attitude about Terry. Besides, I know something terrible is happening. You've got to help me find him. All right, we'll have a look around. Don't tell me you're not up to some kind of a double cross hanging around Flower Henderson's joint. Come on, spill it. I'm telling you, Gus, you got this all wrong. Oh, yeah? Then suppose you explain why you were sitting at the table with Flower's girl and Ma Parker. Maybe you're playing along with the old girl. Trying to put me on the spot, is that it? You mean you think that little old lady is Ma Parker? I don't think I know. She knocked off Duke and Joe tonight at the stadium. You're crazy. Her name's Emma Bates, and she's from my old hometown. She used to know my old man. So, you're covering up for her, huh? That proves you are giving me the business. Well, let me tell you something. You and that old dame ain't going to get away with it. Even if she was your old man, sweetie. I'll take the gun, Gus. Okay. Get an ambulance. Call a doctor. Call an ambulance. Oh, he's still breathing, but not very much. Yeah, two slugs in him. I thought you were too smart to pull a stunt like this. Save the chatter. Look at my face. He slugged me twice. I shot him in self-defense. I'll be free in the morning with a nice, fresh habeas corpus. Well, did you have to make a shooting gallery out of my place? You ought to know. Come on. Oh, I wish Terry was here. He knew Mickey was in danger. He told me so. And now he's missing the story that he was after. Terry's never where he ought to be. Young lady, when we get Mickey to the hospital, you and I are going to have a talk, man to man. I certainly made a mess of things. Muffed three stories, lost my girl, and got fired. All in one day. And Emma, I'm a complete washout without any reservations. Oh, just a little one. Can't think what it would be. I'll show you. Now, don't say a word. And Emma gave me a little talking to, and... Terry, let's start all over again from scratch. Will you? Will I? Oh, that's enough sentiment. Don't forget that Mickey's in the hospital. And if we can get him out and up to my place in the country, I can nurse him back to health. And then maybe, well, just maybe, he might tell me that story you've been wanting to write about. Of course, if you're not able to get up... Get I'll... up, Aunt Emma, you're a genius. I'm getting up right now. Oh, just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute.
Did you identify these men if you saw them? No, they grabbed me while my back was turned. Where's Mickey? Goodness, he's not dead. What happened, Miller? Three mugs overpowered the nurse and grabbed him. Kidnapped. You mean they snatched him right out of this room? That's it. Well, what are you doing here? You know Gus Hammond did it to keep Mickey from talking. Why don't you go pick him up? Maybe you ought to see the commissioner now that you're out of a job. He might make you chief of police. Just like that. Then you have picked up Hammond? No, but I've had a man tailing him from the minute he walked away from the jail. He wasn't near this hospital when Mickey was snatched. Oh, for a minute I thought I had something. Well, that ever doesn't look like Mickey's going to take that trip to the country, does it? Well, isn't there something we can do? Maybe. Let's get out of here. Oh, if I find Mickey, I'll let you know. Now, let's reconstruct this scramble. Crenshaw was snatched, presumably by Gus Hammond. Why? Because Crenshaw is Flower Henderson's attorney and was about to spill damaging evidence to the grand jury about Hammond. Then things began to happen. Two of Hammond's men were killed at the stadium. Well, those are the men I'm suspected of killing. Yeah, no. You. What do you mean? Well, it's right there in the headlines that the police are hunting for a woman with an umbrella who was seen coming out of the dressing rooms where they were murdered. Well, that's me. Would I be too fresh if I offered a suggestion? Sure. Uh, these gang people think I'm that famous gun woman, Ma Parker. Why can't I be Ma Parker? Are you serious? Uh, certainly. Why can't I join up with Flower and sort of be his Ma? And Maris here could help. He likes her and she could get me in. But I won't have her being nice to that heel. Be quiet and leave this to Aunt Emma. Well, where do I come in? Well, uh, you can teach me some of those awful gangster words like gad and Ma and mug. And get me a pistol. A pistol? Yes, to carry in my umbrella like Ma Parker does. And then tonight you get a car and park outside of Flower Henderson's club, and then things will happen. It's all very simple. Three guys grab a man and carry him out of a hospital in broad daylight, and nobody sees them. We know who engineered the job, but Gus Hammond was miles away at the time. Fascinating business being a detective, isn't it? Yeah, maybe we ought to turn in our shields and let that reporter find the criminals. Yeah. Say, wait a minute. That old dame, the one that was with Terry, there was something familiar about her. Did it strike you that way? No, she didn't look familiar, just kind of silly, carrying that umbrella with the sun shining bright outside. Well, that's it, the umbrella. There's an alarm out for an old lady with an umbrella. She's wanted for bumping off those gorillas at the stadium last night. But what would she be doing with Terry Connors? Well, that's what I'm going to find out. Now, you stay here and remember to keep your eyes open. Okay, but don't be too nice to that wolf, honey. I'll be out here dreaming up all sorts of things. Will you stop worrying? Terry Connors, won't you ever learn that when a woman loves a man, he doesn't have to worry about anyone else? Come, dear, we have work to do. Gus snatching Mickey was a smart trick. It's too bad I didn't think of it first. Yeah. He's probably got Mickey stored away in the same place he's got Crenshaw. Come in. Hello, Flower. Hello, honey. You look like a million. Thank you. What's on your mind? What would you say if I told you I could locate Crenshaw for you? Where is he? I don't know, but I've got a friend outside who might be able to find him for you. Shall I bring her in? Sure. Ma, come on in and meet the folks. Flower, I want you to meet a friend from my hometown of Missouri. Ma Parker. Maybe you've heard of her. Hi, you chum. Hello. Ma Parker, my old hat. This dame's name's Aunt Emmy Bates. Dummy up or I'll flatten you. Huh? You heard me. Sit down. I get it on the grapevine that you're Mr. Big and the racket's around this town. So? So I'm ready to cook up a caper with you. It has to do with a citizen named Gus Hammond. Ever heard of him? Maybe yes and maybe no. Why? I don't blame you for playing clam flower. You're smart. I like the way you operate. Only I was burned up when I found out that you and your boys had knocked over Duke and Joe at the stadium last night. 
Well, when I walked in that dressing room and found out you'd rubbed out those two gorillas before giving me a chance at them, I blew my top. Well, I wanted to give the business to those two jerks personally, on account of what they and Gus Hammond did to me on their last trip out west. Yeah? Yeah. And Hammond still left. Are you saving him for any reason? Why should I? I'm just asking. I'm a stranger here, and I wanted to find out what the score was before I give Hammond the business. I just want one minute alone with that double-crosser, and I'll empty this heater into him before he can wipe off that surprise look. Listen, you phony, you're not Ma Parker. You're just a sweet dame pulling a nag. Mickey knows her. She was trying to get Mick to go upstate to her place last night for a lot of fresh air and milk and honey and stuff. I told you to pipe down once. Now, one more crack out of you, and I'll pin your ears back. Yeah? Well, if you were so anxious to knock over Gus Hammond, why didn't you do it last night when you were sitting at the table with him? How can you stand having a dame that dumb around you? Do you think I'd be chump enough to give a guy the business with John Law standing out the door casing the joint? Why don't you toss her out so we can talk some business? You want to know where Crenshaw is, don't you? Take a powder. Are you going to be sap enough to listen to this old doll? I said take a powder. Okay, it's your funeral. All right, Ma, let's hear how you're going to find Crenshaw. And it had better be good. Don't get yourself in an uproar, cousin. It'll be good. Gus Hammond will make it good. Hey, oh. did you do that on purpose? What do you think, pal? Every time I mention Gus Hammond's name, my trigger finger starts to itch. Hello, Gus. This is Zelda. I want to tip you off to something. What, again? Ma Parker's cooking up a deal with flour to put you on the spot. I thought you'd like to know. Bye. Your idea's all wet, Ma. Even if you did get Gus over here, he'd never take you to the hideout where he's holding Crenshaw. He would if I gave him the once over lightly. With what? With my umbrella, of course. You'd be surprised what a lump this umbrella could raise in a man's head. No dice, Ma. But I could shoot him. Oh, sure you could. But a stiff can't lead us to Crenshaw. I don't want to get tough, Lana, but you're going to do this my way, or a certain person will go to the DA's office with that check you used to frame Mickey O'Banion. So you got that check from that reporter? Yeah. Do you want to make something of it? Well, hello, Terry. Where's the old lady with the umbrella? Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Lovely evening, isn't it? Yeah, a swell evening for a lot of questions I want to ask you. Hop out of the car. Oh, no, I'm staying right here. For Get her! Now, you... I... Well, uh, for pennies, hey! Are you gonna get out of that car, or do I have to pull you out? Oh, now, listen, Lieutenant, I'm waiting for my girl. She'll be out in a few minutes. You can. Oh, no, you're coming in. What's the idea? Pull over the curb. Nothing doing. We're following Gus Hammond. He may lead us to Crenshaw and Mickey O'Banion. Crenshaw? Listen, Mr. Hammond. Shut up. Haven't you got a sense of humor? Can't you take a joke? I'm taking one now. On our last ride. You'll never get away with it. Shut up. Oh, dear. Pour on the gas. Where are we? Will you button your lip? Button my lip? Oh, 
Well, they've gone. What are you stopping for? They must have ducked into this warehouse. They couldn't have made the next corner. Well, I doubt it, but we'll have a look around. That's locked. We've got to get in some way. We'll get in. Hey. How about a drink of water? What, another one? You sure do interfere with a guy that's trying to improve his mind. Hi, Chick. Everything okay? Yeah, except that body of yours. He sure drinks an awful lot of water. All right, Bill, bring them in. Mickey. Hello, Aunt Emma. Are you all right? I don't know. I feel kind of hot all over. Well, you've got a feed. You've got to get that boy back to the hospital. He's running a temperature. That's too bad. Now you listen. Shut up. Sit down. How about a Crenshaw? Ready to talk? You know the answer to that one. Maybe you'll change your mind. When I tell you Flower Henderson won't be needing a mouthpiece anymore. Is that on the level? You're acting pretty silly, Crenshaw. If you'll just tell me where that stuff is you were going to show to the grand jury, you can walk away from this place in five minutes. What about these people? They won't be around and talk. Scooped again. It's getting so I'm afraid to pick up rival paper. Holy smoke. Maybe Terry was right when he said he's on the trail of something at the Zavoy. You probably fired him too soon. Hello. Hello, boss. Don't call me boss. And don't be bothering me this time of night. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it, I guess I'll have to give the story to the Star Telegram. And what a story. I got Crenshaw, I got Gus Hammond. I found out where Mickey O'Banion is. You have? Well, now, wait a minute, Terry. Or oh, now, let's not act hastily about this. All right, I'm listening. My old job back. A raise. A bonus. Haven't you forgotten something? What do you want me to pay for? Two weeks off for honeymoon, you slave. Okay, it's a deal. Well, it's about time. Who's that? This is Mickey O'Banion, Gentleman Jim's son. A prize fighter. Gentleman Jim's son. You get that uncouth pin out of here immediately. You're not going to sully the name of Bates, but dummy up, you silly jerks. Mickey's moving in, and I don't want to hear a beef out of either one of you, see? Now scram to the kitchen and rustle up some chow and wing it. And get a load of this. From now on, I'm the big cheese in this rat trap, and you're taking orders from me. Now get going before I hang one in your noggins with this bumbershoot. Oh! 